Today we're launching a video views campaign using Facebook ads. As many of you know, Facebook ads has 11 different objectives to choose from whenever you're advertising. And one of them happens to be video views. This video views is designed to be a campaign that gets shown to people that are likely to watch videos, that are likely to engage with video ads. So that is exactly what we're covering today because a lot of things have changed over the last several months and you need to have the most current interface in order to launch your ads most effectively. Okay, so we're here in the ads manager and to get here, it is super simple. All you have to do is type in business dot facebook.com forward slash ads manager and you are here so you can get to this screen from your personal page or you can just type in that url that i gave you and it's going to take you right here so we're not going to waste any time we're going to create a campaign as mentioned there are 11 different types of campaign objectives right now we're not going to go through any of them outside of the video views campaign i do have another video that explains this in detail so make sure to check that out what we're looking at is the video views campaign. Again, this is a type of campaign that serves up videos to your audience, but more importantly, it is targeting those individuals that are more likely to watch videos, that are more likely to engage in the video format. So it's a great way for you to optimize from the back end, and also Facebook is optimizing, optimizing from the front end and actually serving up this campaign to people that are likely to engage. Because as a quick reminder, even if we hadn't selected the video views campaign, you can still advertise via a video on a traffic campaign, a lead generation campaign, a conversion campaign, any other type of campaign objective, you can still embed a video, but you don't have that optimization on the front end. And also here, you get some special features on the back end, so you can really, really get creative with your video campaign. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the name. I'm more interested in you seeing how this actually works. So we're not gonna worry too much about the campaign name or anything of that nature. The special ad category, as a, as a reminder, if you're running credit, employment, housing, or election type of campaigns, Right here, you do have to select what it is that you're advertising. So for our purposes today, we're actually just gonna go with housing. So you see the restrictions that happen on the back end. Now, I'll call out where if you were not running any type of campaign that has to do with credit, employment, housing, or elections, if you weren't running that type of campaign, I'll share with you where you can be a little bit more um, free with your advertising. So we're not going to worry about anything there because there's really nothing to change. A-B split testing, I like to A-B split test or test manually. So I don't worry too much about A-B. So don't worry about it on your end. Campaign bu budget optimization. With So what this is saying is, do you want to tell me how much you want to spend over your entire campaign? Or do you want to do this manually over at the ad set? So I like to do this via the ad set, but if I toggle this on, you're gonna see that it starts asking me, how much do you wanna spend right now? Or how much do you wanna spend overall? And what this is gonna do is it's going to select that budget, and then regardless of how many ad sets you have or how many ads you have, it's gonna allocate that budget however it sees fit. So you're gonna see if you run three types of ad sets as an example, Facebook is going to automatically gear towards one that feels is going to be the highest performer. But I don't like doing it that way considering that I like to split test apples to apples. So I want to see everything, give it a true split test. So I'll spend $10 here, $10 here, $10 here per day on each one of those ad sets and see which ones win out as opposed to taking Facebook at its word. So now notice that I did not leave that highlighted. Again, I'm not gonna worry, worry about the ad name or the name altogether. You see here, we now have this budget consideration. Had we selected that campaign, this would not be here because we'd already selected the budget that we wanna run with. So now we can select if we wanna spend $20 a day, if we wanna spend $100 a day. Now, one important thing to note is if you hit lifetime budget and you go to more options, run ads all the time and go to edit. Now I went through all of those clicks, but now you can select when you want your ads to run. So I get that question quite a bit. Jaime, how do I select to, for my ads to run only from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? 
those that's mainly my educators out there so my my um my part timers that are that have another job that's when they want to run their ads so that's generally the question i get from my part timers but anyway so that's a little bit about that so we're going to stay with daily budget not going to worry about an end date here when it comes to the audiences you can select a saved audience you can select a custom audience or you can select a lookalike audience now I say that if you were running an ad outside of the special ad category, we just selected that we're running a housing ad. With the housing ad, you get a few more restrictions here. So you cannot run, as an example, you cannot run a lookalike audience. You have to run a special ad audience, which operates very similar to a lookalike audience, but it has less, um, it has less data points to choose from. So just to break this down very, very quickly, a saved audience is nothing more than a, a preset. So you can save your filters on who you want to target and you can save it that way. A custom audience is an audience that you bring to the table. So that means you upload your database onto Facebook. That's a custom audience. If you can um, select anybody that's engaged with your website, that's a custom audience. You can select anybody that has engaged with your Facebook page or your Instagram page. That's a custom audience. So these are all custom audiences that you bring to the table. You're the one that's creating these audiences and serving it up to Facebook. And then a lookalike audience slash a special ad category, sorry, special ad audience, it looks at the custom audience, it looks at that audience that you brought to the table, and then it goes out into Facebook and tries to find more individuals like that. Let me let me know in the comments section if, um, if you'd like to see a video really breaking down the saved, custom and look like audiences. I'd be happy to do that, but just understand that that's what's happening. So we're not going to call any of those audiences into existence. For our purposes today, we're going to go with people living in this location. So you see locations, people living in or recently in, people living in, people recently, people traveling. So especially if you're looking for sellers, this is very important. People living in this location, that's where you want to go. If you're in the relocation game, if you're looking to get buyer leads, then you can get away with doing people living in or recently in this location. Means that people can be in town looking at homes. People can be in town just, um, or be driving in, flying in, doesn't matter. They may recently be looking in a particular area that you're advertising. So this means that they could be interested in buying. They're not sellers because they're traveling in. So important reminder, if you're getting buyer leads, it's fine to leave it there. If you're getting seller leads, you have to go here because you're actually marketing to people in the location that you want to farm. All right, so one of the restrictions that you're going to see here is if we go to <clears throat> Atlanta, if you go to Atlanta, you're going to see the 15 mile mark. This is the minimum. Had we not selected the housing category within the special ad category, then this would start out at 10 miles and then we could actually get smaller. We can get down to a one mile radius. However, since we're running an ad within the special ad category, again, credit, employment, housing, elections, those four categories, since we're running ads there, we are at a 15 mile radius. You cannot ex exclude anybody here in the sense of um, dropping a pin and excluding an audience and doing geofencing like we've done in the past that's a um that's a restriction so 15 miles is the smallest radius that you can have you can't target based off of zip codes you can't target based off of those items so just making sure that you're aware age we're advertising that anybody 18 and above gender male and female alike we're advertising to them and then so we can't select one or the other detail targeting all the types of targeting that you can do is certain interest right here interest Demographics, you're not able to do that. So demographics is, are they parents? Are they parents of older children? Where are they employed? That's the types of demographics. Behaviors, are they likely to move? Are they likely to do um, X, Y, and Z? Those are behaviors. So those two types of items, those two types of targeting cannot be done because you're doing a housing ad. It has a lot to do with fair housing, has a lot to do with litigation, all that fun stuff for Facebook, so it's removed that from its consideration. So now you're able to target based off of interest, based off of a, based off of somebody liking the Zillow page, somebody engaging with the Zillow page, somebody engaging with the Trulia page, somebody engaging with those types of posts. Those are interests. So that's what you're able to target here. So if you go to Zillow, 
There we go. That's an interest. So you see that, I didn't see what that number was before, but it dropped to 380,000. So I can guarantee you that that's less. And it's a potential reach, it's an estimate. It's not gonna be exact, it's not gonna be refined. Estimated daily results. When it comes to, um, if we were doing a, a lead generation campaign, a, a it, this type of campaign, estimated daily, re daily results is, um, it's not all that important. These are very rarely correct. So just just have that in the back of your mind. As long as you're targeting enough people, you're gonna be okay. All right, when it comes to placements, what I, it, when, what I like to do is I like to control my placements. So there's several different items that you can split test. You can split test primarily. You can split test everything, but primarily I like to split test the video. That's something I heavily like to split test. I like to split test the ad copy. So what am I saying within the ad? I like to split test the placements. What am I doing? Uh, where am I advertising? It, where am I seeing the best return? Is it on Facebook? Is it on Instagram? Is it on the network? Where am I? So placements, where am I advertising? Four is the interest. So up here. So these are the, my top four split testing items because this is what I have more direct control over. I very rarely change the the location because this happens to be the location of all the realtors that I work with or I am personally working in these neighborhoods. So there's not much that you can do from the geography standpoint, especially since we're talking about a 15 mile radius. So there's not much that I can do there because the, the farm that you farm is not gonna change all that much. But when it comes to the placements, yes, this is something that you can change. So. For our purposes today, since I want to see which placement is giving me the highest engagements, giving me the lowest cost per click and also the conversion, which there's a way to measure that, even through this video views campaign, I like to go ahead and individually select this. And Instagram, what I would do is I would finish this campaign and then I would duplicate it and then I would select Instagram to, so I can split test that. All right, so we're gonna leave the rest as is and then through play, you see here, what are you optimizing for? Through play or two second continuous video. I am more interested in this. We'll deliver your ads to help you get the most completed video. Place of the video is 15 seconds or shorter. For longer, this will optimize for people likely to play at at least 15 seconds. I like doing it this way because 15 seconds is a good bellwether on is somebody actually interested in this message. I don't want the two second continuous video views because that's not gonna move the needle. It doesn't show enough engagement. It's not that valuable to me. All right, so you see right here, again, these are all estimates, but they're gonna be wrong about 99.99% of the time. And that's okay. You just wanna look more at the potential reach. All righty. So again, don't. I'm not gonna worry too much about the ad name, what I can, or any naming convention, but just remember when it comes to your campaigns, I'm assuming that you're going to launch more than one. So the more detailed that you are in the titles, the easier it is, the easier on you on the analyzing of all the campaigns. Because right now you may know what's going on. If this is your first campaign, okay, well, you have an idea of who you're targeting. But when you get to one, your 100th campaign, you have no idea what went on on campaign 23. So you want to make sure that you label things accordingly so you can do a quick snapshot as opposed to clicking on every single button to see who did I target, where was it placed, what happened here, all that fun stuff. All right, so Facebook page, we're gonna leave it on that. Since we didn't target on Instagram, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about that placement. And then don't worry about this error, this automatically comes up, even though it hasn't given you the option to select a video yet, it's still saying it's an error. So we're gonna create an ad. You can see, you can use an existing post, so anything that you've created in the past, or if you have a mock-up over on your hub, you can pull it in from there. An instant experience is a little bit different. It's kind of like its own little website, if you will. We're not gonna work with the template, but just know that you can select a different type of video. So for our purposes, I'm gonna select a video. Hopefully I have one here. Um, no, I don't have any on this. I don't have any, any here. So let me just upload one random video real quick. Give me a second. All right, so let's go with this one, downloads. I'll go this one. All righty. So it's just a little meme that I created. 
not gonna run any ads to it, but I want you to see what the ad is gonna look like. And then on the primary text, you're gonna do basically the same type of campaign that you've been doing or the same type of ad copy. Whether you, if you're launching ads for this housing, as an example, you can do a price drop ad, a um, coming soon ad, a new construction ad, all that fun stuff. But if you're running ads to your local, let's say barber shop or your barber shop or your whatever types of business, if it's not within the special ad category, remember you have more flexibility. You can get a little bit closer in on your target audience. You can select behaviors, you can select demographics, all that fun stuff. So don't think that, well, I wanna run ads to my ice cream shop, but I, I don't wanna advertise to a 15 mile radius because I know that they're not gonna come. That's not a restriction that you have. What I'm more interested in this particular video is sharing with you how to run a video views campaign. Alrighty, so then headline um, for our purposes, want to buy a house, question mark. And I'm just, I'm not worried about the ad copy. If you're interested in ad copies, if you're a real estate agent and want the top three performing ad copies right now, then just go ahead and email me at admin at com and just put top three ads on the subject and I'll get those over to you. But I'm more interested in you seeing how to run this type of campaign because it's very effective with getting your branding out there, getting your message out there, and ultimately getting you some really good results. Um, don't wait. Then over here, is it time to buy? Question mark. I'm not worried about the, again, I'm not worried about the ad copy. I'm more interested in you seeing what it's gonna look like. So what's important here is that on the back end, you have a bit more feature, more control over your ad, not not too much more than a lead generation or a traffic campaign, but the video views is more optimized for the viewers. So it's gonna serve it up to people that are more likely to view. And you may be thinking, well, Jaime, this looks exactly like the lead campaign or the traffic campaign. And I would say, you're basically right from the ad perspective, but don't forget what we did over in the ad set. We chose what we optimized for. So that's, this is what you're, this is what you're paying for. This is why you're selecting the video views campaign as opposed to lead generation, as opposed to traffic campaign. Cause yes, I agree with you. This particular page is the exact same, um, of the traffic campaign, not necessarily the, um, not necessarily the, uh, the learn more, uh, I'm sorry, the lead generation. So just some subtle nuances, nuances, all right? So this is the call to action. I always put learn more, regardless if it's a product or a service, making sure that everything else is set up. Then you hit publish and you launched your video views campaign. 